the attack of the Stevens. That's right. Stephen Jackson and Stephen A. Smith arguing about what? Dumb it. Now, let's get to it. <sighs> Kyrie Irving made a statement, right, about how he felt social justice uh, need to be at the forefront and urge players not to play. Well, on first take, Stephen A. started going through a tantrum and praising LeBron, thinking this is a strike at LeBron. And he goes out with his LeBron James pom-poms on and start going all off, talking about Kyrie. Don't, you know, he likes Kyrie, but he's wrong on this. And coming at him, talking about how wrong he is. Kyrie Irving, how dare you? You wrong, brother. LeBron James has done this and that and this and that. LeBron, 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 LeBron. So, to come to, you know, Kyrie Irving's defense, is someone who was on the outside looking in, who was on these calls and is in contact with most of these NBA players. And Kyrie is one of those players that Steven Jackson, you know, is speaking on. Because he's saying now ain't the time to be playing basketball. So when he heard Stephen A. Smith say that after he had him on the show of all the smoke. This is what Stephen had to say, Stephen Jackson that is, about the comments by Stephen A. Smith. Hey, what's up world? Stephen A. Smith. I was checking you out, my brother. I see what you just said, but let me give you a little game. One, you can't tell a man what to fight for. Two, us as the blacks, we never had this moment. And I've heard that from people that's been fighting for us to be equal for 50 plus years. I've heard our day mouth say we've never had this moment. So why not take advantage of it? Maybe Kyrie understands this moment. That's a very good point. Mary, maybe Kyrie Irving understand this moment. I've never seen nothing like this. So if, if I've never seen it, and people who's older than me saying they've never seen it, maybe there's something to it. But let's wait. We've never had this moment, so we got to take advantage of it. There's no way a game is more important than police killing us. Yeah, it's been going on a long time, Stephen A. Yeah, it's been going on a long time. But how long are we going to continue to let it go on? How long are we going to be comfortable with just existing? I know it's higher ups that's talking. A black man shouldn't be saying that. And when he said that, old oh, Stephen A. Smith... He was like Hulk Hogan coming out of his shirt. A black man shouldn't say that. He was at home. The show was over. Stephen A. Smith came out at home after doing the dog on first take. He couldn't wait to get back to talk to address that situation there. Oh, he was living. Because Stephen Jackson wasn't done. Steven Jackson wasn't done. Oh, no, no, no. Cam Jack said, you know what? I could do you one even better. Free game for y'all that none of y'all know this. And I'm going to tell y'all what a lot of people won't say. My career ended, I was pushed away a lot.
stopped by me doing the video on the song about Donna Sterling with Scarface. Y'all go look at it on YouTube. It's called America the Beautiful. I just got cut by the Clippers right before all this came out. Y'all can ask CP3. Y'all can ask Matt Barnes. I just got cut by the Clippers right before it came out. I did a video on the song about it with Scarface talking about it. Is this a quarter or, or this a cotton field? You know what I'm saying? Y'all go check the song out. And I never played in the NBA since. So don't ask me what I'll do. Don't ask me what I'll do. I'm doing it. Yeah, front line. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Now, with that being said, Stephen Jackson, I mean, Stephen A. Smith, was still livid about that comment that was made to him. He didn't even hear that. He was hot. And this is what old hot Stephen A. Smith had to say. Because he was livid. Brother, nothing but love for you. Let me say that out off the bat. You know I got love for you. We go back a long ways. And we gonna continue to go back a long ways. My brother, mad love and respect to you. And my heart goes out to you and all the loved ones for George Floyd for what happened to him. I know that hits home for you. It hit home for a lot of us. But for you, in special ways, without question. Having said all of that, you told me you was going to hit me to the game. Let me hit you to some game. I disagree with Kyrie. I ain't changing one bit. And please don't tell me what a black man should say because a black man should speak his mind, particularly with intelligence and knowledge. If he hasn't, you have it. I believe I have some of it. I believe in this instance, even though Kyrie Irving is a knowledgeable and good brother, in this instance, I don't think he displayed his knowledge about this. You know about the force majeure provision and the collective bargaining agreement for the NBA. You know that if the NBA season gets canceled, they can reopen talks and ultimately players are going to lose billions. You know about the tens of uh, the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of jobs across the NBA landscape that's going to be lost if an NBA season doesn't resume. You know what kind of catastrophic effect that could potentially have on the economy. Now, I understand we're going to look at it and we're going to say desperate times call for desperate measures. Somehow, some way, this got to change. I agree with you. But what is that change? Because guess what? I heard it from you, Stephen Jackson, watching you on CNN, talking about legislation on Capitol Hill, talking about how you didn't want to go see the president, talking about you ain't trying to be no photo op, that you want to raise awareness like LeBron and so many others are doing, and then hand that baton to somebody who knows what to do with it. That's what I'm talking about. I mentioned that when I talked on first take this morning about how, how about raising awareness and then reaching out to the NAACP legal defense fund, who's already put in that groundwork with consent degrees that they negotiated with the city of Newark in Baltimore and Ferguson, Missouri and beyond to make sure that the Justice Department had negotiated a deal in concert with police departments to hold police officers accountable. I'm the person that went on the air and called for federal legislation that it be designated a federal hate crime for a police officer to shoot and kill an all black man. How about addressing the issue of dudes that are incarcerated and then get out for nonviolent crimes? How about expunging their records instead of holding it against them when they apply for a job and keeping it on their application? All of these things are relevant, my brother. You alluded to some of it on CNN. You know how I feel about your brother, Matt Barnes. I didn't hear that from Kyrie. All Kyrie said was systemic racism. I ain't down for it. I ain't playing. That's not good enough. You got to have a plan when you're planning on not showing up to work to do your job. And it can't be just racial oppression vaguely. You got to be specific, bro. I stand by what I said. I meant every word I said. I'm not backing up, bro. You know me better than that. But I appreciate you. I appreciate the love and respect that you always show. All I would ask is you do the same for me. Don't ever assume that higher-ups are talking. Not out of my mouth, dog. I talk for me. Ain't nobody putting this in my mouth. And in terms of what a black man should say, this black man is preaching about the importance of having a game plan and executing that bad boy. Not just whistling into the wind about what we don't like. I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm not saying the protesters are out there doing that. I'm saying Kyrie did it. 
with just that blanket statement as to why he did not want to play. I stand by what I said. You know I ain't budging. But I love you, bro. Keep on keeping on. We're house soon. And there it was. The response. Now, listening to Stephen A., he made a lot of great points. He made a lot of great points the second time he uh, made a statement. But that's it's more to it than that. It's more layered. See, the reason why Kyrie didn't put that many words out, because Kyrie figured you already know what he's talking about. Now, Stephen A. came, I mean, uh, Captain Jack, Stephen Jackson came back with another one. This is why I say common sense ain't common no more. So when they was killing Kaepernick, these same people now that y'all listening to, they're saying they, that they shouldn't do this and they shouldn't do that, was killing Kaepernick, right? Killing him. All the same people that's talking right now was killing him. And they turned out to be all wrong, all look like fools. And all y'all talking about, yeah, man, they shouldn't have done any covering. They, man, they got up, they apologize to Kaepernick. And y'all listening to him again in this situation? This is why I say common sense ain't common, bro. It's right here in y'all face. Don't smoke, don't fall for the smoke screen, bro. These same motherfuckers that was bashing Kaepernick, killing Kaepernick, are apologizing to him now. Or saying he need to do this now. And so are, are saying that they was wrong about how they looked at it. What's so different about this, bro? When you're but y'all gonna listen to him now? I ain't the smartest person in the world, but I got common sense. Y'all need to take my class. Hey. Woo! <laughs> Cam Jack ain't playing with him. Cam Jack ain't playing with him at all. So, say, like he said, this time is showing me what blacks don't care about blacks. Now I see why we never had change. You want to be black until it's time to be black. The truth hurts. You see, when people start talking like that, Is because they figure, like, look, I can go all in. But Captain Jack on the front lines because it's on his front steps. You know, this is somebody that's close to him. She might be his half-brother. They look just alike. So that situation is entirely different than what everybody else's situation is. That situation is already basically what they say the cake been baked. Cake been baked on that one, baby. Cake been baked. Cake been baked, baby. Cake been baked. So you got to ride. You know, that's, that's family. So you going to be on the front line. But it's the same reason why brothers didn't get together and run out there for Donald Sterling. When Donald Sterling's situation happened and you put out that statement, oh, Adam Silver wasn't thinking about you when they blackballed you out the league. You didn't open your mouth and go public about that at all. You stayed quiet. Cam Jack stay quiet. Cause he knew that wasn't the time. But why was it the time this time? Hmm? I'm always going to stand with the brothers, but I'm also smart. I also know 
There's a lot of people engineering for this. That ain't us. That's pushing it. I also know. I see police officers helping the situation. Helping the looters. They vandalizing vehicles. Handing out bricks. Are we supposed to ignore that too? Like, why are we ignoring this? Why are we ignoring that? Hmm? Those are telltale signs that there are there's a problem somewhere in the pipeline. And we got to get to the end of the pipeline and find out what the problem is. So when everybody's marching and doing all this movement, you know, getting the right people in the office to vote for, getting all these procedures and laws changed takes strategy. It takes years of planning. Electing certain people in power. You know, those are the details. Those are the things that matter. I told y'all before, that's how the Skittles crew got over. And they got all these rights and laws and y'all thought it happened overnight. No, because they had the right people in office. Y'all voted and got a, Obama in office and thought that was the only election y'all had to vote for. We got Obama in there. He didn't do nothing for the black. I hear that all the time. He didn't move for the for the gays than he did for the blacks. If he don't have the House and the Senate both against him because you guys did not go out and vote, how can you blame him for not getting things done? They killed all his programs. They destroyed the programs. Vetoed him. Tore him down. So the last four years in, that he was setting up in office, all these things that he was going to do, bring recreational, all this money back to the city of Chicago, all these things that he had on the table to get done that was going to cost them money that the Republicans did not like that and none of the conservatives, they vetoed it out because they took over the House and the Senate. That's how you control the president. You guys didn't go out and do your parts and vote because you don't know how the system even works. So for four years, Obama just sat there, basically a hostage. Signing bills he don't even want to sign, but got to because they don't have the House or the Senate. But they love to tell you, oh, Obama signed a bill that gave, that gave the power to the cops. Y'all pushed it on him. He had no choice but to sign it. What do you want to do, resign? So, I know better than to blame him. He became powerless in that situation. And meanwhile, you and him having this dialogue back and forth, for what? It don't mean anything. The NBA commissioner came out and basically said, we're going to have the league back and we're going for it. And they said by the 31st, Things are going to kick off, and players went haywire. So it ain't Captain Jack ain't playing in the league. Kyrie was already hurt, so he already wasn't playing. There are other players other than Kyrie Irving that have some reservations about playing. And 
even though Steven Jackson is talking some very valuable things, I don't think he stated all the motives of what they really want to do. And why the re the reason real reason is he don't want them playing. He's hinting around to it, but I already know what that is. So the the message is lost. And that's why LeBron's like, I don't get it, because we could play and still bring awareness to it. Now he wants them to lose money. He wants that money lost. So they can conform and join and do something and stand with Black Lives Matter and some support or what have you. Like, look, let's not make them no revenue till we get these laws passed. And, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to say, but there's a whole voting process in Congress and you have to get these things done legally, the right way. So... For us, when we're intimidating somebody, we're trying to take over. They've been doing it for years. They're just being assertive. So we, we understand what all of this politics and trickery with words come from. So from that point, nobody's really too much concerned. So both of y'all made points. Both of y'all to a degree, I understand what y'all saying. But we got to get back to the realization of what's going to transpire. Do you want to like not try and just cancel the whole thing? Or are you going to move forward? You know, that's not even Steven Jackson's decision to make. To be honest, he's out the loop. So... At this point, the NBA will use him only like journalistic purposes only. And he was doing good for himself. And then this accident happened, or this incident happened rather, and it's derailed all that and took all the attention away from, you know, him actually having a very stellar year doing uh, his commentary. Yeah, well, it is what it is, bro, man. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, man. Don't forget to support the page. Hit up the cash app. I hope you guys have hit the like button. I got to tell y'all that all the time. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, select all, and I'm out.